back, everyone. Kelly Goldsmith from Vanderbilt University is our guest on Open Line tonight as we talk about human behavior, how we have all reacted in this time of a worldwide pandemic. And let's keep uh, going right to the phones. And Angel is, nope, we lost Angel again. Michael on line three. Hi, Michael. Michael, you there? I'm here. Hi, go ahead. What's your question? Hello. Um, I've got a question for Kelly. In your studies, what what would happen if this pandemic this last six, eight, ten, ten, twelve months? What what mm -hmm. can you expect out of the human behavior? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important question because we just don't know how long this is going to last. And the way I think about it is if this pandemic lifted tomorrow, if tomorrow all the economy opened up, there was no more sickness, you know, putting major constraints on people's behavior is like pressing down on a spring, right? You press it down and you lift your hand up suddenly and that spring's going to bounce right back up stronger than ever before. So you can bet if the pandemic lifted tomorrow, I think all the bars in Broadway would be full. We'd all be hugging and drinking and partying and, you know, being ecstatic about returning to what we knew as life before, whatever that meant for us. So I think we'd actually see a lot of spending. I think we'd see a lot of revelry if the pandemic was lifted quickly. I think if it lasts another 12 months, another 18 months, you hold that spring down long enough, it's going to change its shape. Right. And I think that could be in our future. And I, I try to focus on the positive with that. I mean, honestly, in terms of consumer spending, we're living in a country where most Americans couldn't afford an unexpected medical expense if it came their way, right? Mm -hmm. They'd have to put it on a credit card. And I think we could all, myself included, right? We could all cut back. And what I'm hoping is the pandemic, you know, if we get a, a positive takeaway from it is it really forces us to kind of look in the mirror and think about our spending and say, hey, what do I not need, right? Can I live with a little bit less? Can I take care of myself? not just in the short term, but in the long term. And I'm hoping that we see a little bit more of that. Though I'm also hoping people are back on Broadway right. having yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, but like I'm saying, I think... I definitely realized, Kelly, you know, just personally looking at my bank mm -hmm. account, realizing, hey, I've got a little extra cash in there. What's going on? It's, I, I, yeah. Looking back, I did. I, I kind of did a personal audit and looked at yeah. December, January, February. And I realized, gosh, I spent a lot of money at restaurants or, you know, I, oh, yeah. I've gone out to bars Starbucks? with my friends. And oh, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. And, yeah, and it, it that definitely stuff. adds up more than you expect. And when you're self-isolating and, and going back and forth, you you definitely realize that. I, I wanted to yeah. ask you a, a question, though, I, reading over some of your um, just talking about the, the difference, how this affects people in different economic levels. There's a mm -hmm. quote that you said, yeah. in a time of uncertainty, money can buy you stability. Those who have more money can buy more stability. Yet yeah. others are left out in the cold. That's a fact. Right? That is true. Yeah, that is, the, I, that, I was interviewed for that article and the woman who was interviewing me said, oh, this, this pandemic is the great equalizer. And this is, this interview is a, like a month ago now. And I thought, no, it's not. There's nothing equal about this, right? People who start off, not, it's not just money, right? Money's not the only relevant resource here. How about your immune system, right? People who start off with more mm -hmm. are going to be able to buy themselves secu security, but also they're going to be less likely to be susceptible to the physical problems that are associated with this pandemic. And there's probably a relationship that people who've got more money might be able to take better care of their health because they've got the money to spend on it. So I think there's a lot of socioeconomic problems that are being revealed by this pandemic. And I think it's really vital that we think about the people who have less and we think about, I mean, I get terrified thinking about, you know, homeless people and like who is reaching out and helping them. And with social distancing, the short answer is probably not many people, right? And so, you know, we really, we really do all benefit from coming together in these times. Collectively, our health improves when everyone's health improves, right? And so I think it's really important to think about not just ourselves, but the broader health of our community. And I'm really hoping there's, you know, the politicians and other people have their eyes on it because we need to make sure that hopefully everybody is, uh, is able to stay healthy and take care of themselves. All right, let's go to line five. And Susie, hi, Susie. Welcome to Open Line. Yes, hello. Hi. Uh, I I wanted to make the comment that we live in a rural area, mm -hmm. and um, I, a lot of my family live close by, within a couple of miles. And I really, I'm all in for this thing that we're trying to stay at home, not buy anything, not go anywhere, and everyone's home. And I think mm -hmm. the main government, which is mostly men, does not realize what it takes to run a house where everyone is home. And so uh, we need more of everything. 
And then everybody mm -hmm. has turned around and said, do not hoard, do not buy extra things. Well, if you have all those people at home, you need more food, you need more toilet mm -hmm. paper, you need yeah. more stuff. And we mm -hmm. all cooperate, these families do, so if somebody needs milk or they need this or that, we trade milk or whatever. And so mm -hmm. I think I really resent that deal about don't buy extra because somebody's got to be taking care of these people you said to stay home. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's almost on right. a thank, – thank you for that call. That's She's kind of talk, – you were mm -hmm. talking about the countries that are more interdependent. That's kind of like a microcosm. Mm -hmm. She's got a small community there, a yeah. family, where they're all kind of dependent on one another to help each other out. Well, and families are not one size fits all. What may look like hoarding for one person, right. they may be buying it for their block or their community, right? So I think it, it's important throughout this whole thing. It's vital that we try not to judge each other too harshly because, I mean, if I, if the research I've done for 10 years has taught me anything, I don't think any of us, even in our worst times, even during a pandemic, I don't think we're bad people. I don't think we're malicious. I don't think we, I don't think we want to tear anybody down. If anything, I think we want to build each other up. But at the same time, we just want to protect ourselves. And what it takes to protect yourself and your family may differ person to person. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be understanding about that. And for that reason, you know, don't judge what's in somebody else's cart. Just focus on your own cart. <laughs> Benny is on line one. Hey, Benny, welcome. Thank you Hello? for holding. Hi. Yeah, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hey, Roy, this is Benny. Uh, hey. I'm on disability, Roy, and I live on $990 a month. And 400 of that goes to health care and mm -hmm. medicine. And uh, I'm used to living alone, so this don't bother me a bit. I mean, the last four years, I had like four people come to my country home, and uh, it's a trailer. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. two comments here. I appreciate you guys doing all these program, and there's some unsung heroes that's not getting credit. Okay. It's your power company people is keeping the power mm -hmm. going, and the other retailers utility workers i haven't heard a word about mm -hmm. them heroes i mean them guys they're out there only yeah. time a tornado you hear about it right and doc about the toilet paper that's about the only thing a person can control so they go buy all the toilet paper in their mind yeah they think well that's the only thing it goes in it comes out <laughs> it's put it nicely <laughs> All right, Benny. Thank you. And that's a good point that he brings up. I, you know, we've yeah. been really good across the country. So many people have done so much to show appreciation to the health care workers, but there's a lot of other people on the front lines mm -hmm. out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think everybody that's helping keep the city moving, keeping us moving forward. You know, every, uh, there's a lot of people putting themselves on the line. I think that's a really important point. And I love the idea that you know, I, I try to always find a silver lining, right? And this pandemic has really triggered a lot of gratitude in people. I'm grateful to people that, quite frankly, I didn't think about enough prior to this. And mm -hmm. I think that's really good to be reminded of that. All right. Thank you, Benny. Let's go. Let's see if I can figure this out. Frank. Frank, are you there? You're yeah. on open line. Go ahead, sir. How are you? Hello. Uh, my phone call is twofold. Okay. One, I have some information for those that don't know, because it took myself and others that I work with uh, several, uh, not days, but a few short weeks to come across the right to people to get in touch with due to the amount <coughs> of things that are going on that the states had to handle in a short notice. Yeah. Uh, it's overwhelming the system. But if you have not gotten if you're eligible to draw the from the state unemployment, plus it's going to affect you six hundred dollars a week. If you do not know or get in a runaround uh, on who to talk to about and have not received your uh, debit card from the state, if you're not doing direct deposit, Xerox I found out by actually getting in touch with someone local instead of the state. Z Rock is pushing the cards out. Their phone number, and I had to hold for two hours, but got my situation handled. Oh, okay. The phone number is 855 462 5887. That is Z Rock. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Interesting. if you haven't got your card yet, 
call them. Uh, the second thing is, this country went, come out of a depression, went to World War II, stood together, and built this country. We cannot be divided now. We cannot play politics. Uh, and you better, I'm going to say this one thing about politics. You better think President Trump jumped on things in a heartbeat and well, none of us like everything that's going on. And Governor Lee is making the best decisions he can make with the information he's got to work with. Let's stick this out for the short term, mm -hmm. and I think we'll come out of it fine. I like your positive attitude, Frank. I appreciate okay. it. And, you know, just speaking of, you talked about leadership earlier, Kelly. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's talked about, you know, I, <laughs> I've kind of gotten on Facebook of friends of mine who are either liberal or conservative and making political arguments. And I've said, you know, now there's going to be a time and a place where we will look back and reassess mm -hmm. just like we have after 9-11. We'll probably form a commission of experts and so that we're, we've learned where did we go wrong, what did we do right, and uh, let's be better prepared for the future, which is generally the way, the, the way things work. But there, there's just no playbook for this. I mean, you know, governors, mayors, yeah. the president, the Congress, yeah. everyone's kind of, you know, it's a day-by-day -day situation. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that information. That's really helpful. I mean, again, I think the more, the more we can come together and be heroes for each other in that way, even if it's just sharing information, yeah. that's really powerful. You could have saved somebody a lot of time. So thank you for that. All right, Jeff is uh, holding on line four. Thank you, and thanks to all our other callers who've been holding patiently. We're trying to get to you. We're so glad so many of you are calling in and taking part. Jeff, what's on your mind? Jeff, you there? Let me hit that line again. All right, we'll hold, hold Jeff for a second, and we'll get to our friend, uh, let's see, Becky on line two. Hi, Becky. Becky, you there? Hello. Oh, who's this? Hello. This is Anthony. All right, Anthony, go ahead. We'll take you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I want this country to stay together, too, uh, more than anything. I want the churches to be blessed. Yeah. But these task force, uh, the president got, the governor got, and the mayor got, you don't see no Christianity up every side of them. You don't see the pastor's friend for them. You don't see nobody up there representing what really hurt me the most, you don't see nobody black or of different origin up there beside the governor. It's all white. Now, it's more blacks being killed by the disease, but still, he left it out. They won't talk about it, him, Trump, or the man, because yeah. uh, they don't want to get off of this health uh, policy right. while they close all these hospitals. But what I want to really say is I think if we just crack down in these foreign countries like Russia, like we had, uh, we wouldn't be in this bad shape. You know, no other president let no other government country control us like this president right here. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't never seen nothing like that. And I'm a soldier, and I don't appreciate it. I'm All a right. veteran. Thank I haven't got my money yet. Anthony, thank you for the call, and I will say that this has definitely exposed a lot of issues in our, not, you know, throughout the system, but healthcare system, definitely, that I know a lot of folks are talking about, Kelly. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. And I think I, I've been, to Anthony's point from the beginning, I mean, I've been, I can't tell you how hard I've been trying to find data about the way this affects people of different races, of different socioeconomic status, and I, I mean, there's not enough data that's out there. And I, I hope that it's it's not been collected or it's not been aggregated yet, so they're not giving it out. I mean, maybe there's a reason that's a decent reason, but I agree with you. It's it's unfortunate that we're not getting all that information right now. And, and thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, we're going to take another break with that and more of your calls with our guest, Kelly Goldsmith, right after this.